morning, everyone. You know that blurb I put in the bulletin about being on time? <laughs> Sometimes it's the priest who's late. Thanks for your patience. It's an extra special kind of ce- celebration today because we, are, uh, we have two children and two teenagers who are completing their initiation into the church. Uh, they've been uh, very patiently waiting for this day. And they've been journeying in the, the RCIA process for, oh, two years now, I think, eh? Yeah. Uh, normally, the RCIA process is a more public process because it's not a secret society where we just sneak people in through the back door. But we, because of COVID, we've not been able to be as public as we would like to have been. But today, we are very public in welcoming them. So I welcome them, and I welcome their families as well. It's good to have you with us. Other than that, there's just one other announcement, and I'll read it word for word, okay? Just a reminder that the time for getting in on the 50-50 draw is quickly coming to an end. There has been great response to this fundraiser, and it seems the winner will be taking home a tidy sum. I think we're up to 4,600, so your tidy sum when you win is 2,300. If you have not purchased your tickets as of yet, or would like to purchase more, you can still do so. The envelopes are at the entrance of the church or can be picked up at the parish office. The deadline for entries is as, is as follows. Tickets must be purchased and turned into the office by 4 p.m. on Friday, May 21st, this coming Friday or be put in the collection basket at masses on May 22nd and 23rd. So you can still do it next weekend. If you, if you miss the, the soft deadline of fri- Friday, you can still meet the hard deadline of Saturday or Sunday, okay? Any entries found in the parish mailbox after Sunday morning at 11.30 will not be included in the draw and the funds in these envelopes will be, will be put towards feeding the staff. <laughs> I didn't write this. I'm just reading it. I think this is, I think this is the gospel according to Mark Mahoney. <clears throat> Don't forget the draw will be on Tuesday morning, May 25th at 10 o'clock and will be live streamed. Good luck to all. Let's begin our celebration. Our gathering hymn is Sing We, Triumphant Hymn of Praise, which is found on the sheets that were given to you when you came in. Sing We, Triumphant Hymns of Praise, our Lord these festive days. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, my road before untrod, ascended to the throne of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. the Father let us sing, to God the Son our risen King, Alleluia, Alleluia, and equally let us adore the Holy Spirit evermore. gathered in the name of that very trinity in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the grace and peace of our lord jesus christ risen for our salvation be with you all on this feast of ascension 
We remember that Christ's ascension marks the entrance of Jesus' humanity into God's heavenly domain. This feast reminds us that we are to get busy proclaiming the glory of God's kingdom by the witness of our lives. You took on human form and became one of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You conquered death and revealed your divine glory. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You call us to continue the work of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. With voices united, we give glory to God in the highest. <clears throat> us, 
with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of, your, of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, He presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight, While he was going, and while they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of joy for the Lord the most high we must fear great king for all the earth God goes up with a trumpet blast the Lord goes up with trumpet blast God goes up with shouts of joy 
Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to God, sing praise. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God is king o'er all the earth. Sing to God with all your skill. God is king o'er the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to make the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one Lord and one Spirit, just as you were called in the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it said, he ascended, what does it mean but that he is also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who ascended is the same one He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of their ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I am with you always till the end of the earth. Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, you, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to talk about the Feast of the Ascension, that great departure of Jesus in his physical form, without also talking about next Sunday's Feast of Pentecost, that great return of Jesus in his spiritual form. Let's just stay with today's Feast, Ascension, because if we do Ascension well, Pentecost almost takes care of itself. When I think of Ascension, I can't help but think of the words we often hear the priests pray during a funeral mass. You've all been to a number of funerals. You'll recognize these words. Life is changed, not ended. For anyone who has ever lost a loved one, including the disciples 2,000 years ago, it initially feels like life has, for all intents and purposes, ended. Only with time can we once again believe that life is changed, not ended. In other words, we don't get over our grief that quickly. Maybe that's why they say time heals all wounds. While I believe that's true, I also believe something has to happen in that time, in that gap between the great departure and the great return, if any healing is to occur. Otherwise... We'll just become bitter and angry and complain that life is not fair. What has to happen is a letting go. And letting go always feels like a death. That is why most of us let go only when we absolutely have to because we feel we have no choice. Before Jesus sends his disciples to go into all the nations and proclaim the good news to the whole of creation, he first instructs them to wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Spirit. Before you run out to save the world or fix the world with your vision of what you think the world should be, wait, pause, let something die in you so that my vision can come to you and empower you from on high. This will surely feel like death, and it will be a kind of death. Waiting makes us all feel so powerless. We say to ourselves inwardly, I feel useless to change this situation for the better. There must be something more I can do than just sit here and wait. Generally, and I say generally, men tend to have more difficulty with waiting than women. If we men could get pregnant, 
we would try to jam nine months into nine weeks. The waiting and grieving mode is very different than the fixing mode, which wants a solution right away. I think with ascension, Jesus is preparing his disciples to let go so that with open hands, they can now receive his spirit, his enduring presence. Ascension is not the end of Christ's presence, but a change in the way his presence is experienced. Jesus made it very clear that until he left physically, he could not return to us in his spirit. Mary Magdalene, if you remember from the Easter story, Mary Magdalene on that first Easter morning, after encountering the risen Lord, lunged at him and tried to hold on to him. The risen Lord said to her, Mary, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Jesus didn't want Mary to settle for his limited physical self. What he wanted to give her was his deeper, more intimate self, his spirit. But he could not release that spirit into her heart and into the world until he ascended to God. And that would require waiting. She wanted him on the old terms. He was trying to convince her the best was yet to come. There is always a dying that accompanies waiting. There is always a gap between Ascension and Pentecost. Mary Magdalene had to die to her desire to relate to Jesus as she always related to him, in the flesh. If she could stop clinging and learn to wait, Jesus would come to her in the power of his spirit. We are told that the apostles do not fare any better than Mary Magdalene did. When the risen Lord appeared to them, they asked, and we heard in that first reading, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They wanted something to happen right here, right now, in this time. They, like Mary Magdalene, are clinging. What are they clinging on to? They are clinging on to the notion that the Messiah's job is to come into the world like an armed warrior and overthrow the Roman Empire with military force. This is what must die in them. This is what must... This is what they must learn to let go of. This false notion of what it means to be the Messiah must die in them. Until it dies, the real Messiah cannot come. Clinging to their own ways, they are not in a position to receive Jesus' spirit. Their hands are closed tightly around the old and so cannot open to welcome the new. I'd like to do a little exercise with all of you right now. Picture someone you have had to say goodbye to in death, someone you were close to. Imagine that person right now. Picture yourself after the funeral when the crowd, with all their supportive words and gestures, has gone home, and you sit and wait by yourself. Think of how hard it was for you to let go of that person, of how hard it was not to cling. Forgive yourself for being human for clinging to that person and wanting them to remain with you on all the old terms. Slowly open your hands to let them go. Thank them for being part of your life. Forgive them for their faults and ask them to forgive you. With your hands still open, Watch them physically move away from you. Without breaking eye contact with that person, watch them return to you in their spirit, radiant like you've never seen them before.
is his ascension. Why does it take 40 days? Maybe that's how long it takes for us to dare to open our hands, to let go, to die inwardly, and to prepare ourselves to receive once again. It seems to be the pattern of Jesus' life, the pattern of all nature, and the pattern of your life and mine. As you get ready to plant your gardens from seed, you will notice instructions on the back of the package of seeds. It will say something like this. Takes seven to ten days to germinate. That's ascension. That's the time it takes for the seed to die in darkness, in obscurity, and away from human observation. Just when the seed dies to itself, a new version of itself emerges. Let's learn to wait like the seed, and Pentecost will take care of itself. I want to thank you, Chloe, and Nancy, and Alexander, and Addison, for all the ways, all the little ways you already died in this process of coming into the church, into com full communion in the church. You could have done something else with your Sunday nights. I'm sure you could have. But a little death happened in you, and you joined us. And in the process, you opened your hands. You let go of so much in your life. And then with those open hands, you were in a position to receive so much. I hope you will know the outpouring of the Spirit today in ways that you'd never imagine. Chloe, Alexander, and Addison. You have asked to complete your initiation and so enter into the full communion of the Catholic Church through the sacraments of Confirmation and Eucharist. And you, Nancy, are seeking to complete your initiation through the sacrament of First Eucharist. You have made your decision after careful thought and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsors, Annette, Jared, Giselle, and Eva, and face the community. The church now asks those present to join these candidates who are completing their initiation as they renew the promises made at their baptism. So I ask the four of you in particular, and all of you as well, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it and eager to live it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chloe, 
Alexander and Addison. As infants, you were baptized and became members of Christ's body, the church. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. The Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given to them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you you so that you will continue to be active members of the church and build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear people, let us pray that God's Holy Spirit will be poured out abundantly upon these candidates for confirmation to strengthen Chloe, Alexander, and Addison in their gifts and anoint them to become more like Christ, the Son of God. If you join me, we'll extend our hands over them and call down the Spirit. powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon Chloe, Alexander, and Addison to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. of the Holy 
with belief and faith that we are never alone, we bring our prayers to the Lord. For all of us, the church, for an outpouring of God's great power on each one of us as we live our commission to go and make disciples of the nations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our world who are burdened by the pandemic, may their physical, mental, and financial struggles be supported by our words and actions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For hope, the gift given to us in the resurrection of Jesus, for a never giving up attitude, trusting that God will provide us with all that we need. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those completing their initiation into the church today, for their families and catechists, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, including Ray McIsaac, Ainsley Mongraw, Bill Stafford, June Robichaud, Aaron Demery, cousin of Karen LeBlanc, and for those who have died, including Maurice Daly, nephew of Shirley Connor, Eric Gallant, brother-in-law of Anne Griffin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we remember this day, As we remember this day that your son was taken up to be with you, hear our prayers. Help us to remember that no matter what we are going through, God is with us and for us. We ask this in all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing Living Spirit, Holy Fire.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant that through this most holy exchange we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and humans, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and, and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Valerie, our bishop, Francis, our pope, all the clergy and all your holy people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, including Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus, the resurrected one and the ascended one, has taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Jesus the Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are invited to share in his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Join us in singing Bread of Life. Now, give 
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. For our final blessing, I'd just like to call together uh, forward those who were new, newly initiated, who completed their initiation to, uh, to receive their certificates. Okay? Chloe L.A. Addison Ferguson. Congratulations. Alexander Ferguson. And Nancy Abu Samra. Congratulations. So perhaps we can acknowledge them, eh? <laughs> Please bow your heads. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. May he grant that as, may he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you, who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Please join us in singing, Lord, you give the Great Commission. And just a reminder to bring your sheets back home with you, not to leave them in the pews. Oh,